For the last few days, we're talking about more about European scholarships. To study in Europe, different scholarships. We have covered a lot of scholarships in Europe. And don't forget, there are some open scholarships right now, which are DAD, Erasmus Mondo's scholarships. They are open and more about to come. Let's see what about Canada, another good destination for international students. But with two challenges that I'm going to say, that's first of all, education in Canada is very expensive. That's why you have to look for a scholarship. Another thing, when you are a private student, it's very hard to get uh, a visa. So many students have tried and they failed. So with, for many reasons, but first of all, it's very, very, very hard to get a visa. But if you are having a scholarship, things become more easier. So your scholarship will cover education and you get a visa. Let's see some scholarships in Canada. You can find more scholarships on our website. For now, we are having more than five open scholarships in Canada. Let's now talk about Alberta scholarship. So this is one of the best scholarships in Canada. So the scholarship is open for the second round, which we get a deadline in November. So it's time for you to think about this scholarship. Let's see some eligibility criteria for this scholarship. First of all, you have to be international student. You have to fulfill all requirements for admission because this scholarship, you apply for admission, then you get considered for scholarship. So if you are applying for bachelor degree, you have to be having high school degree. If you are applying for masters, you have to be having bachelor degree. If you are applying for PhD, you have to be a master's degree holder. Those are uh, important requirements or criteria for this scholarship. So what are eligible programs? I can read, it's a very long list. There is nursing, pharmacy, medical, medicine and dentistry, science, engineering, law, social sciences, uh, business, fine art and humanities, education, native studies, public health, agriculture, rehabilitation, medicine, science, yeah, at bachelor, masters and PhD. Let's see what about application process. Application for Canadian universities, it's totally different from the one of Europe. First of all, you have like for masters, PhD, you have to find your supervisor before you start application. Normally for other countries, for bachelor and masters, you don't have to have a supervisor. So you get a supervisor once you get admission. For Canada, especially for this scholarship we are talking about, you have to get a supervisor first, then you continue your application. If you are interested, you open the link. I put the link down in the description. You go to your program, you choose a program, you see if you, you, you have all requirements, then the next step is to contact the supervisor. There is there will be a list of professors, then you choose the one you like, you send him or her email, then once he, he or she replies to you, you start your application. And meanwhile, you'll be correcting all required document. So let's talk about how to text a professor. That's so tricky. Professors are receiving many emails from students. You have to be careful and wise enough so that your email will not be rejected. So first of all, what you do, you introduce yourself, you say what is your background, your experience, then you tell him which program you want to do, if it's masters or bachelor or PhD, then you explain him how eligible you are, why you like his program, and how you can contribute to his research group or his lab. So then the professor will go through all the email. Sometimes you respond or not, but if you are interested, if he is interested in you, he will just contact you. Some mistakes you don't have to commit when you are, you are writing to a professor. First of all, never write a general email. Take his name, say, dear, this one. Dear Arbet, so you say your his or her name, 
in your greeting then you make you stru you structure your email so that once he reads you say this is a nice student then uh, I, my advice is that you attach your CV, a very simple academic CV. So that will be the first step. Never do this mistake of sending many emails at a time. So text one, wait she or he reply and never, never send many reminders. So wait like, wait at least like one week if she or he is not replying so you can just send a second email to remind but if like for the second email the professor is not responding that means either he's too busy or he didn't give consideration to application so you can look for another one so that's the first step and which is challenging and once you get approval from the professor then we start application. An application process in general is easy. Another thing I have to say to someone who never tried Canada, almost all universities in Canada, they ask for application fees. So you check and you pay application fees and you get your admission. And for this scholarship, once you get admission, you, get, you will be considered for the scholarship. So this is for this scholarship, just go down and such more and next step we will see more about application so share this information with other students ciao